Hello guys, bersama saya lagi dalam Alright Napa Channel seterkini sahabat semua. Ya, ucap tamah Perdana Menteri kita yang ke-10, Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim. Ya, berada di SME Future Day 2024, Berlin, Jerman. Wow, terbaik. So, kita boleh nampak bagaimana penghormatan, penerimaan ah, pemimpin-pemimpin dunia terhadap Perdana Menteri kita. Tapi apa yang mengherankan di negara kita. Ya, walaupun ramai pimpinan dalam kerajaan, penyokong kerajaan menerima ah, kepimpinan Datu Sri, tetapi yang malang ya sahabat semua kerana kita masih melihat ya kerana uh, politik yang sempit, politik fitnah ya, ada di kalangan politikus-politikus ini yang sanggup ya untuk uh, memburukkan imej perdana menteri kita. Sedangkan beliau adalah perdana menteri satu Malaysia bukannya perdana menteri untuk pakatan harapan untuk barisan nasional, JRS maupun GPS. Ya perdana menteri termasuk uh, perikatan nasional. Tapi hari ini, hari demi hari kita melihat betapa tenatnya ya ahli-ahli parlimen, politikus-politikus daripada pihak pembangkang yang tidak habis-habis yang menjajah fitnah, memburukkan Perdana Menteri kita dan sebagainya. Jadi sahabat semua, saya mau ingin membawakan anda ya ucap tamah Perdana Menteri kita yang begitu membanggakan buat negara kita Malaysia. Thank you. Very good evening. It's a pleasure to come all the way from Malaysia to Berlin to participate in this uh, conference, meeting these MEs. Have you heard from the lady? You have already 700 companies, German companies operating in Malaysia, including one of the largest ever investment from Infineon of 5 billion euros. They have chosen Malaysia with Zeman, with Baos, with a uh, uh, number of uh, known uh, operators because you have a region, a sub-region, ASEAN, the most peaceful in the world for now, fastest growing economy in the world, having exceptionally important strategic position very close to Europe and United States and extremely close to China, Japan and Korea. So I think for the strategic importance of uh, Malaysia is where we would certainly welcome the German participation, particularly the SMEs. As we mentioned, this is a period of gloom. I was uh, discussing with the Vice Chancellor just now, just before this session, about the pessimism. Because uh, we talk about nothing else. Ukraine, Gaza, the conflict between China and United States, um, the slow pace of economic development, the post-normal crisis of chaos, of uh, contradictions and complexity. So come to a Malaysia and uh, Southeast Asia and ASEAN, because we are very optimistic. When we look at Germany, and I told the Chancellor, the President, the Naima, Chancellor Scholz, I said, when we, from a distance look at Germany, we learn a lot. What do we learn? This was a country completely devastated after the Second World War and severely punished to the extent that a complete devastation of your cities, including Bali. But there was a worse period, very tragic in modern times. But you emerge as a force. You emerge as a major economic force in the world. People like us look at Germany and say, what is it that they have that make them so confident, so optimistic, so diligent, and so disciplined to bring back that strength, to become a phenomenal force. So when the young professors and scholars I met this morning from Germany, who were naturally very pessimistic, very cynical, I said, yes, thank you very much, but I represent a different view. 
we look at uh, this country and we learn from it. So the problem that you face now, even when you talk about all these uh, issues of wars and calamities and climate challenge, is small, minor, compared to the problems that our parents, our fathers and mothers had to face immediately after the Second World War. So I represent a very optimistic view of the world. And in our region, because it is peaceful, it is democracy, a democratic system, as I said, it has a completely pragmatic policy, very non-aligned, keeping very close relations with the West and extremely cordial relations with China and the East. So, you are welcome because, as I said, post-COVID, we have risen and our foreign and domestic investments for 2023 is the highest we ever achieved since Malaysia gained its independence in 1957. The German companies' participation in investments have increased in the last year. So, you need to ask, why did all these Siemens and Infineon choose Malaysia? And Airbus has a major facility now. It's because it's peaceful. It has clear economic policies to attract investments. And um, it has a dynamic sort of a relations with all countries, very positive. Although we do express our views strongly on many issues, sometimes a slight difference with Germany, but it does not matter. What is important is in the economic relations, in the political understanding, in working together, we have become great friends. And I think with uh, the, uh, what I've read and the numerous interviews, everybody asking, you know, is the problem with the United States and China is uh, impacting the world. I said, no. We have uh, half a century of these negative vibes about a possible tension within China because of Taiwan, because of the South China Sea. For the last 50 years, There has been this negative perception. But let it remain in the political arena. And in the business community, it takes a more realistic position. That as far as we see, and we experience, and we know, in this excellent bilateral relations with China, we have uh, RCEP, this FTA with China, with Japan, with Korea, and we are, of course, at your service. We will engage, but you need the China market, but you need an important base in Malaysia. We'll provide that base for export, as Volkswagen uh, have done with uh, Airbus and many other companies, and of course Infineon and Siemens, to make sure that Malaysia remains to be hub. Which comes to the next fundamental question. Is the policy attractive? Are we clear on our policies? My answer is yes. In our Madani economic framework, we have energy transition is very clear. We will become in the region a major hub for green technology, for hydrogen, for ammonia. And um, the hydropower is huge, probably the largest in the region, to the extent that we can export to the new capital in Indonesia, undersea cable hydrogen of, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, from uh, energy from Sarawak, Malaysia to Singapore, undersea cable from Sarawak into Peninsula, which means we have abundant source of energy for our disposal. And green you know, uh, alternative is being the focus. And therefore, I would uh, insist or appeal to you to understand this because uh, unfortunately, uh, Europe 
has been just busy within Europe, but I think economic interest would uh, compel you to look elsewhere. New markets and uh, more economic sort of arrangements that can ensure you succeed in your business enterprise and together we in Malaysia would benefit too. Malaysia has an uh, English-speaking force, of course, and there's also a major advantage. If you ask many of these big uh, German companies why people go to Malaysia, other than peace, clarity of economic policies, is also because of the workforce. English-speaking, disciplined, and well-trained. I admit that probably we need to focus, after looking at the interests and the priorities of the new industries, we need to focus on additional training in IT, in, in digital transformation, in um, high-skilled uh, workers in Tibet and engineering. Yes, we have to do it, and we will do it in synergy with the companies. So, um, I think that's the certain advantage. I wouldn't bore you with all these details and figures and facts that uh, normally ministers will prepare for me. I just take to the point that rarely you have a region working together as one force in ASEAN. Rarely you find extremely peaceful region and the most vibrant economically and the fastest growing region in the world. With the advantage of having very strong relations with the United States and Europe, and at the same time having equally strong relations with China, Korea, and Japan. So, I think that's the thrust of my message. Either than the splendor and the beauty and the forest and the deep forest and the beautiful beaches and warm water, you can swim any time of day. There's no winter in Malaysia. So, I, I take this opportunity to introduce you to the country, to the policies, and at the same time to encourage you to have a look and, and exploit, I mean, use the opportunity for the advancement of your companies, SMEs, and Malaysian economic development. Now, I will conclude with just saying this. Um, in the past, from Germany, we have all these giant companies. But to us, in the context of an emerging economy like Malaysia, SME here in Germany are huge. SME in Germany is to us big companies. So that's why I, I, here I don't mention too much about SME. Because to us, you are not SME. You are SMB. So I think uh, I would uh, again appeal to you to try and get it understanding and use this facility. I was at the Coven State too this afternoon. And, and of course I refer to slightly different subjects. Because sometimes we talk only about differences where we disagree on Israeli Palestine conflict or we disagree because of the differences of religion, etc. But you inherit an intellectual giant, a genius, Goethe, for example. And I introduce my speech today from what Goethe referred to the need to unite, the convergence of civilization. Goethe, this German intellectual giant, took pains to read and understand and immerse himself with Hafiz, some student Hafiz, who wrote in Persian and he wrote he tried to immerse uh, himself in that of understanding. They show so much tolerance and respect that I, as a Malaysian, as a Muslim, choose to in 
inovasi and mind and uh, subtle and close respect. Yes, sir. 400 years before him, Hafiz wrote, so it is the one is west, the one, and uh, from that power of Gaza, he influenced many Muslim scholars and thinkers of the world, including the giant philosopher poet Iqbal from the Indian subcontinent, Muhammad Iqbal, who admired and accept the ideas and ideas and the values and the universalistic outlook of God. What is the relevance? The relevance is the thinking that is absent these days. The convergence of ideas, they need to work together, Europe and Asia, the East and the West, not only in terms of business and economics, by in terms of culture and ideas, and tolerance and respect. Why do we survive in the South Asia nations in ASEAN? We have a multiracial society in Malaysia, of course the majority are Muslims, but we have a number of ethnic Chinese, ethnic Indians, Christians, Hindus, Buddhists, working together. Malaysia, in the north is a Buddhist island, in the south is Singapore, in the east is the Christian Philippines. But we work as a team. Differences did not bother us, and this is the spirit of togetherness, the university of ideas that we promote, that would help us to attain peace in the region, and at the same time prepare the region. Malaysia and the region as one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Thank you again. Terbaik sahabat-sahabat semua, itu dia ucapa, ucap tamah ya Perdana Menteri kita Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim di SME Future Day 2024 Berlin, Jerman. Jadi dengan dengan apa yang diucapkan oleh Datuk Seri ya memberikan keyakinan kepada dunia luar di sana di luar sana terutamanya ya potensi-potensi ya pelabur-pelabur daripada negara Jerman ini. Ya mengatakan negara kita ya sebuah negara yang aman damai, sebuah negara yang merdeka, ekonomi yang pesat bertumbuh dan sebagainya. Ini tidak boleh dinafikan sahabat semua, ini adalah kebenarannya. Walaupun pihak pembangkang seringkali mempersoalkan menyanggah perkara ini kerana saya tahu ya pembangkang ini tidak mahukan kerajaan hari ini berjaya untuk memulihkan ekonomi kita. Kerana antara sebabnya bagi bagi pandangan saya sahabat semua Mungkin kalau kerajaan hari ini di bawah pimpinan Perdana Menteri Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim Berjaya memulihkan ekonomi kita Memulihkan, uh, mengukuhkan nilai ringgit kita ya, me Membawa masuk pelabur-pelabur ke dalam negara kita ya, Pengangguran dapat dikurangkan ya, uh, Ekonomi bertumbuh Rakyat uh, progres, gaji progresif dapat ditingkatkan Saya percaya ini adalah ketakutan utama Ya kepada pihak pembangkang sehingga mereka sanggup ya, kita boleh lihat mereka seakan-akan mahu ya untuk mensabotat segala usaha kerajaan ya seperti mana yang dikatakan oleh mantan perdana menteri 22 tahun tambah 22 bulan katanya jangan datang ke Malaysia fu ini adalah satu kenyataan yang kita boleh anggap sebagai uh, kenyataan derhaka kita boleh lihat pimpinan-pimpinan daripada pembangkang tidak habis-habis sahabat semua. Mahu untuk membina propaganda persepsi buruk kepada imej negara kita, ya agar ya supaya negara ini sukar dipulihkan. Mungkin itu antara penyebab mereka sahabat semua setiap hari meroyan, tidak berpuas hati dan sebagainya. Pilihan raya sudah habis. Jadi apa yang penting adalah untuk kita berganding bahu bersama-sama untuk memulihkan negara kita. Eh, bukannya seperti yang dilakukan oleh pihak pembangkang hari ini sahabat-sahabat semua yang tidak habis-habis eh, membuat persepsi ya persepsi biadab ya saya boleh katakan persepsi biadab ya untuk mahu supaya apa nih uh, supaya uh, tidak berjaya ya kerajaan hari ini jadi mungkin itu antara tujuan mereka sahabat-sahabat semua jadi terima kasih 
sekiranya anda juga mau berikan sebarang komen pandangan dan berikan di dalam ruangan komen. Jadi izinkan saya untuk mengundurkan diri dan seperti biasa peribahasa mengatakan tak apa kangkap dua ton keinginan dalam bahasa Melayu tebuk dadah tanya selera. Sekian saja daripada Orat Nepat Channel. Saya kita berjumpa lagi. Bye bye. Thank <music> you.